All right. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? See it. Sweet. All right. It's time for Demo Fest. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Rebecca Rutherford. I am from Sketch Development Services, as are all the lovely people you see here. And we are excited. I'm going to turn this off. It's a little thunderstruck to get you amped up. So we are excited to present the Demo Fest Ultimate Remote Work Tool webinar. And what inspired us to do so was all of this remote work we've been doing and all of our customers that we work with um, who have been looking for ways that they can collaborate better now that we're in a remote work setting. So we're going to show you some of our favorite picks uh, to help you work better, collaborate better, and work more efficiently and uh, make the best of this situation. So um, Sketch Development Services helps teams work better through coaching, training, and software development services. Um, but we're not here to talk about us. We're here to talk about what makes a remote work tool ultimate. So the first few things that I would mention are they have awesome qualities like uh, they're easy to use. They create efficiency. They uh, inspire creativity. They're low or no costs, which we all like. Um, they help unite people. They empower people and they reduce awkwardness. So first up, we're going to start with Matt House. He is going to present um, Slido. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Ian Garrison will be presenting Lean Cafe. Our partner from Fresh Tilt, Betsy, she is going to take you through Mural. Uh, Mark Taylor will follow that up with Miro. Chuck is going to give us a view of Asana. Jeff is going to show us Microsoft VS Code Live Share. Then we're gonna have a little break here where Song is gonna delight us with some insights about keyboards because he's a little bit of a fanatic um, and you'll see why. John Krusen is gonna show us Crisp. Matt is gonna come back to the stage with Scrumbler. Jeff Fox will show us how fun Fun Retro is. Krusen's coming back to the stage with Loom. And then we're gonna finish it out with Mike Veneman and Mentimeter. So it's a pretty wicked awesome lineup. And I'm gonna stop sharing now so that I can get Matt House on the mic and he's gonna take us through Slido. Let's get started. All right, we're gonna move fast through these, like a blazing fast riff from Carrie King. So we're gonna start off here with Slido and we're actually gonna be using this for our question and answer portion of today's webinar. And so it's a really neat tool. It's easy to get in, easy to get up and running. And so what I'm looking at right now is my admin screen. So we've already created this demo fest event. And then when I'm done with this, Rebecca's going to share the QR code and the link to get into our Q&A. And what this will allow everybody to be able to do real easily from any device is get in and ask questions. And our thoughts for today are going to be that we're going to come back at the end and go through the questions. And what's really cool about this is you can ask questions, you know, while the presenter is presenting, but it also lets you upvote and upvote questions, which is really handy because I think we've all been at conferences or been at presentations where you've got this really awesome burning question and somebody else asked the like the dumbest, most obvious question that there ever was. And you're just like, oh, we've only got so much time. I really want to get to this really good question. So if you see somebody else throw a really awesome question out there, you can upvote that thing. So by the time we get to Q&A, we can do the most extreme answers to the most extreme questions that you've got. And please, as you're doing this, maybe prefix it with what tool your question's about. That'll make it easier for us to figure out who to be directing your question to to get those answers later. Rebecca? Back to you. Heck yes. All right, so I'm going to pull back up the screen and give you guys a moment to get onto Slido. Um, I've got a QR code, so if you wanna do it from your phone, you can do so. And I'm going to go ahead and play a little crazy train while we do it, let's do it. All right. All right. I'm 
feeling pretty ultimate right now. All right, so that's enough of that. Uh, Matt House, if you could post that link in chat here, and then everybody who uh, wants to help participate in Q&A can do so. Coolie, cool? Done. All right, man. All right, so next I'm going to hand it over to Ian. He's going to take you through Lean Cafe. Ian, take it away. Thanks, Rebecca. So I'm going to show you guys Lean Cafe. Um, that's a tool for running meetings following a Lean Coffee format. If you don't know what a Lean Coffee format is, I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly as I go through the demo. So uh, you start here, you get a list of all the meetings that you've had in the past. I'm going to create a meeting just to show you what that looks like. So you create a meeting and then it opens it up. Um, I'm going to get some of my other friends here to join uh, just as participants to show you what it's like as everybody kind of jumps in and starts creating topics. So <clears throat> to create a topic, you're just typing things out. Uh, things like, so you're building this list up. Uh, if you've got other people join, they'll they'll join and start doing that. There's Chuck. Go ahead and type something, Chuck. You'll be able to see as people are typing things, there'll be an indicator that people are adding stuff. I can on step two. Oh, sorry. I went too far. Go ahead. So it's going to aggregate all of these. You'll do probably some amount of time for brainstorming, for meeting things. That's probably good enough. And then you'll be able to curate those by combining some things. Uh, I'm just going to pick two to combine. Um, normally, you just combine things that are, are the same topic, because everybody's putting them in at the same time, makes things go faster. So you'll merge those things. You can unmerge them. And once you've got that list kind of curated, then you open it up and everybody gets to vote on topics. You can vote uh, one time or multiple times on everything. So I want to know all of my votes are about, is there any more cake? So once you get all of those votes in and you can see how people are voting to know when everybody's done, click next. Uh, and that'll give you the, uh, this mechanic will allow you to facilitate that discussion. So you see over here, everything's prioritized based on the number of votes that it had. And we'll start the discussion. Then you get a nice timer to help you time box this conversation. And when that time runs out, you can snooze it and it'll give you an extra two minutes. Um, you'll be able to see what the sentiment of everybody is. Should we keep going? Is it time to move on, even though we've only talked about this for 30 seconds? So that gives you uh, a nice uh, bit of information to help facilitate the flow of conversation. Uh, and then once you've gone through all of your topics, uh, you wrap things up, let's finish the meeting, and you get a nice overview of um, how, how many votes each topic had, what order you went through them, how much time you spent on each, and if you took any notes during the course of the meeting, those will show up uh, underneath here. So really helpful to, to facilitate meetings this way. We've used it both in person and especially now that we're all virtual, um, and it's a really helpful tool. And that's in Cafe. That is awesome, Ian, thank you. I'm gonna play some Sweet Child of Mine. It makes me feel good. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had somebody posted in Slido, they wanted to know if we could talk about the cost of these tools as we go through them. So just a heads up panelists. Um, but I already have an answer for this one because it is free. So that was easy. Um, but remember, uh, attendees, if you have any questions, head over to Slido. The link is in chat um, and you can add your questions and upvote them as we go. Awesome, awesome. All right, Betsy, you are up next. Take it away. All right. Thank you. I'm so excited to be demoing Mural today, which I believe is the ultimate whiteboarding tool. So this is a virtual whiteboarding space, which is really, really good for a lot of different purposes, but most especially for um, really trying to recreate anything you might have done around a physical whiteboard in the before times, or if you're trying to do like teaming or design thinking or creative type endeavors where it really helps to have that visual. Um, so some of my favorite features of Mural that I want to point out today are they have templates. So like if I go here to create new Mural, 
they have them categorized by all these different types of things you might want to do. So, you know, if you want to do a team icebreaker to really help keep the human connection alive during these times of remote work, there's a bunch of different templates out there for it. Um, if you're trying to dive in deep on a problem or trying to empathize with your customers or brainstorm new solutions, there's just all these different templates out there ready to go that can help you through those activities. You can also, of course, create a blank mural and kind of create your own destiny. So when you're in your mural, you can see there's sticky note functionality, there's text boxes, there's imagery, there's connectors, there's lines, there's all these cool kind of things that can help you visually communicate, align, and tell your story. Um, another super helpful feature is that voting is built in. So if you want to do some kind of dot voting, like if you are trying to hone in on a solution or brainstorm, that's built in as well as timers. So if you want to do something like a lean coffee or some kind of timed activity, that's right there. My favorite, favorite feature of Mural that really won me over is the ability to share a visitor link. So if I copied this link and sent it out, people could click the link, come straight in. They don't have to register for an account. There's no kind of speed bump um, setting up their own profile or anything like that. So truly check out Mural if you're looking for a lightweight, easy to collaborate, visual virtual whiteboarding tool. As far as cost, um, I, th I think there's, there's different levels. I'm pretty sure there's a free version. I think the version I paid for is about 10 bucks a month, um, but totally worth it. I'll play my exit sound effect. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love that. I, I had my exit music for you queued up, but I like that better. Um, I do believe, uh, Betsy, that I'm on a free version of Mural. So um, that's perfect. So somebody posted in Slido a question about um, if Mural and Miro got into a fight, who'd win? And it just got upvoted a little bit. So I'm kind of excited that on the heels of this, we have Mark Taylor presenting Miro. So perhaps. Uh, Mark, you can point out a couple of things that would, you know, maybe take down Mural if Mural, Miro and Mural could arm wrestle or something super aggressive like that. All right, take it away, Mark. And take it away with your microphone on too. That's nice. Great. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so a little competition with uh, Mural here. But yeah, I'm Mark and uh, I'm going to talk about Miro. Now, I, I love to use a method called story mapping, and it's a great way to take like a new app or a big feature for an app and to break it down into your workflow and into stories and into releases. So, so it's a diagramming technique. It's something that uh, usually would be done in person on a whiteboard together with a whole team. And uh, Miro is actually my favorite tool for uh, doing that remotely with the team. So it's an online whiteboarding tool as well. Now it does let you do uh, freeform diagrams as well, like what Betsy was showing. But story mapping itself is actually more of a structured technique. And so I really like uh, Miro's built-in story mapping template that they have. So here we have a story map that's for a new Italian restaurant. And so first we set up the user's workflow across the top as columns. And next we add stories to each column. And I'll go ahead here and just add uh, soup as an appetizer. We can uh, move stories around to different columns or different parts of the workflow. So I'll take toasted ravioli, a great St. Louis treat. And I'm gonna move it from being an entree to being an appetizer. And then we can also like reorder stories. So within entrees, I'll take spaghetti with meatballs and move that to the top. And then we can even actually take uh, entire columns of our workflow and move them around. So like I'll take appetizers and I'll move that before drinks. And then the next thing you'd usually do then is plan some releases. So we can plan out multiple releases up here. So like for my MVP release, I might decide, you know, first of all, we're gonna do it in a rented building. And then, um, you know, our MVP, we're just gonna have some soda and some spaghetti with meatballs. And Miro does have Jira integration, which is great and updates work in both directions. And licensing, uh, there is a free version and it allows you up to three editable boards and you can give access to those boards to other people as well. And then uh, there are different levels of, um, of uh, you know, subscription as well. 
So, uh, so in summary, uh, Miro's story mapping template, uh, to me, it just gives that perfect combination of structure and flexibility. And of course, Miro is a better tool than uh, Mural. So thanks. Ooh, interesting. That was an interesting way to end that. Mark, thank you so much. Not only am I excited about Miro, but I am very hungry for Italian food. Um, we do have some questions about comparing Mural and Miro. We're going to hold those until the end because we've got some other demos to blast through. But um, I'm excited because at the end, I feel like we need to stick around and save some time for Betsy and Mark to go head to head. Um, you've got a few minutes to really think through how you're going to do that. Um, so next up, uh, Chuck, I'm going to give you the floor and allow you to talk us through some things about Asana, um, which is really helpful when people's workload gets hard to handle. Yes, thank you. So we haven't had enough Metallica represented yet. Okay, time for Asana. Demo Fest! Here we go, I'm sharing my screen. I'm fine with that. Good. Let me pause that. Okay. So I'm showing off Asana today. Asana is a project management tool that was created about a dozen years ago by a couple of the Facebook guys, including one of the co-founders. Uh, it's got a lot of the features that you'd expect a project product uh, management or project management tool to have, uh, but it's got some really slick UI. Um, so you can come in here and see like a list view. You can uh, edit details, assign people, uh, edit due dates, the stuff you'd expect, put in subtasks, things like that. But the, the nice thing about it is that it's really well put together. It's really intuitive to use. And uh, one, of the, one of the best features about Asana is that they give you different views to see your tasks. Um, so you can use a, a list view like this, a board view that might be familiar if you wanna move things along like that, uh, a timeline view if that's, if that's uh, more compatible with the way you wanna work, calendar view, and then we start getting into dashboard view and some other views that, that involve uh, paid features. Uh, everything you're seeing here is in the free tier, um, but there are uh, multiple tiers available, including premium, business, et cetera. Um, but the, uh, the, you get quite a lot with the free tier. Um, and so you, it's really easy to get up and running, get started. Um, you can have multiple projects and have different project members involved with each one of them and everybody can see their own assigned tasks. So you can, you can see here things that are assigned to me. Uh, so it's really a, a nice, com fairly complete tool in, in the free tier. Uh, and that's it for Asana. Beautiful. I am personally an Asana lover. And uh, so this speaks to my heart. And uh, Chuck, I'm gonna, on that note, end this with a little Led Zeppelin heartbreaker. As we transition over to, let's see here, who's on the list? Jeff Barczewski, do you wanna show us some things uh, that Microsoft has given us to make code sharing a little bit easier? Yes, thanks, Rebecca. Let me get my screen up here. We're not done with Heartbreaker yet, huh? Okay. Okay, now we are. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to demonstrate VS Code Live Share. It simplifies reviews, a collaboration of source code. It's free. It works with VS Code, with Visual Studio, or even in just a browser. You can use it for pairing, for reviews, boot camps, or training. You can even log in uh, anonymously, or I mean, not log in anonymously, or log in with Microsoft or GitHub. So basically, I can start up from VS Code. I I enable or I uh, enable live sharing of a, to collaborate. Then it gives me a pay or I go to that link, send that link to somebody, and they can they get to this page. It looks like this. Uh, if I uh, if I log in with the browser, then I actually get uh, a browser editor that looks that looks similar to this. Uh, if I'm in with uh, VS Code, I can see uh, in VS Code exactly, and it just basically downloads the data. Uh, and so then basically as I scroll around or whatever I do here, I can highlight things, show things. Uh, and then even uh, if you've enabled read write mode, then people can actually help edit. So if they want to correct something here, then they can do that and it gets corrected on everybody's screens. But the nice thing is you can browse any of the files that are here. You can watch what the presenter is looking at. You can co-edit on things. Uh, it's just a fantastic tool. You can share terminals share our services, uh, everything you want to do for code editing. Thanks. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, thank you, Jeff. That was phenomenal. And we are getting a lot of questions in Slido for anybody who's paying attention in there about um, users, user IDs and passwords for these tools, costs, et cetera. Um, Jeff, did you mention that already for your tool that you just demoed? Yes, it is free. You can also, like I said, you can use it anonymously or you can log in it with Microsoft or GitHub. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, so let's um, do some sunshine of your love now as we transition over to Sung, who is going to dazzle us with some keyboard magic. Sure. Let me share my screen. I want to not do that. Sorry. So I'll be talking about uh, the keyboard and the question of how important is it in our day-to-day -day lives while we work. So studies have shown that 60% of computer office workers nationwide suffer from some type of wrist pain and 50% uh, ignore recommendations of taking breaks away from the computer. And with the increase of remote work these days, uh, these numbers are most likely to increase. Uh, there are many factors that can cause wrist pain, but um, we'll be focusing on the keyboard right now. So the first type of keyboard that you see is typically a full-size keyboard. Uh, the benefits of this keyboard, it has a dedicated numpad and arrow keys. So if you need to input numbers really quickly, you can use muscle memory with the, the number pad format and um, navigate your cursor around with uh, dedicated arrow keys as well um, without any need for any special modification to the key, um, such as any um, shift or control or alt combinations and such. So um, the other benefit is that since there's a lot more keys, um, functionality is dedicated to a single key press. So less, um, need to memorize different combinations and such. So the next type is uh, just a general category. I uh, will just say it's a custom and they come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, so there's benefits to that. You can tailor, tailor the size of a keyboard size, um, eliminating the keys that you just don't use. Um, and Along with that, you can also map the keys and layers of the keys to your liking. So you can reorder keys that are mostly used closer to your fingers on the home row and uh, make typing just uh, a little easier instead of uh, reaching all around the place. So also the components are very um, modular. So um, you can change the look and feel by change, swapping out the keycaps can also change the feel type of the switches. So if you want a more linear feel or a tactile, or if you like the loud clicky, uh, you have the ability to put those in as well. And if you want lights, you can put lights in there. And the third type of keyboards you'll see are the, the really weird looking ones, uh, the ergonomic. They come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, some are more useful than others. Some have no keys whatsoever, like you see on the bottom in the Orbi Touch. Uh, just basically two orbs that you just grab onto and just uh, jiggle them around to, to simulate the uh, key presses. So these typically address the unnatural positions of the arms and wrist, uh, eliminating the, the ulnar deviation, reducing the forearm pronation, and keeps your mouse closer to your keyboard so there's less travel back and forth as you swap uh, from keyboard to mouse input. Um, Typically the layouts are pretty unique. We'll take some time to learn. So your words per minute uh, number will drastically reduce until you uh, familiarize yourself with the, the layout. Um, and uh, a lot of these ergonomic boards give your thumbs more work and uh, give your pinky more of a rest. So um, if you notice on a typical keyboard, you'll um, use your pinky for a lot of things and it's just very strange that your smallest finger does a lot of the work so so some solutions have your thumbs which is your stronger actually the strongest finger of them all to do more of the work so 
Yes, it's very important, the keyboard. <laughs> Thank you. So, by the way, Song, you look different today. Did you do something with your hair? Yeah, I, I cut my own hair today. You noticed? I noticed. Well, thank you so much. I feel like I have one order of business after this, and that is to go to Amazon and immediately order that uh, keyboard that is shaped like a ball, and then <laughs> figure out how to use it. Okay, so good. Thank you, Sung. All right, next up, John Cruson. Um, rock this way. Yeah, here we go. Um, b before we move forward, uh, I, okay, the secret's out. How do we deliver such on-fire software at such reasonable costs. No, it's not offshoring. Uh, it, we've decided to start hiring Japanese anime um, to develop software. We get it at rock bottom prices. All right, um, I'm here to talk about uh, Crisp. So let's talk about it. Sometimes your dog barks when you're in the middle of a meeting. Sometimes your kids um, start screaming or they start barking uh, in the middle of a meeting. Um, sometimes you live uh, in the middle of a, a highway and some semi-tractor trailer decides to start jake breaking uh, right as it passes your house. And that's really annoying and it's especially annoying to other people that are on the call with you. Um, so now there's this thing called Crisp which like fixes that problem. So here, really quick demo. Um, I went to crisp, that's crisp.ai, and I just downloaded it. Uh, and then once it's installed, you get this little job up here that allows you to use crisp to uh, modify your uh, noises in the background. So let's make some noise in the background here. So I'm gonna keep talking while you're hearing us rage against the machine. And I'm just gonna click this guy right here. And I'm gonna keep talking. I haven't pressed pause on this thing. I don't know if you can, hear that or not, it is super loud in my ear still, but when I turn it back off, there you go, you hear it again. That's crisp, you can do the same thing from the speaker perspective too. Well, that was me pausing. And you can turn down your, uh, your participants' background noises as well. Crisp, free for 120 minutes. I've got 119 minutes left this week. And um, if you want to buy the pro version, which gives you unlimited uh, noise cancellation, that's like, $3.33 a month. Bam. Totally worth every penny. John Cruson, thank you so much for that. It rocked, super ultimate. Matt House, what do you have to say about Scrumbler? Who's ready for Scrumbler? <laughs> yeah, feel the excitement. So yeah, so we've talked about Miro, we've talked about Mural, uh, both great tools, but when you don't need all that functionality, here's our friend Scrumbler. Thankfully, I can show you everything there is about Scrumbler in this period of time. So all you do is you go to scrumbler.ca, because it's Canadian, and you create a room. So I'm gonna call this one Demo Fest. And then the only functionality it's got is the ability to create sticky notes, to be able to put text on the sticky notes, and then to create columns that you can rename. And it makes for, oh, I forgot, there's a third, there's a third thing it does. You can also do some lightweight dot voting. I think you've only got so many dots available to you. But what is great about this is that with that room, as someone is demonstrating, anybody can join and it is super lightweight. So here's an example of a separate session I've got up and you can see as I create a new sticky note here, you immediately see it show up and update live on the screen. So I use this for retros, I use this for some maybe lightweight story mapping. Basically anytime if you were in, if you were all together and you were in a conference room and you were gonna start slapping sticky notes on the wall to start working through a problem, this is a great alternative. Now, one of the pros is I don't need a login, it's totally free, it's easy to get up and running, but that also leads into one of the cons is that it's not very secure because literally somebody else just took my room code and has now gotten into my room and is adding stuff. So if you create a really unique room code, that's really difficult to do. But one of the things that's actually really great about this tool is that um, the source code is available. So from the homepage, 
for Scrum Blur, you can actually get to, I got to move that, GitHub and get their source code. And it's super easy to get up and running, get your own version of it running. I've had clients do this, they'll be running it on their own network, hook it up to a Redis cache to be able to store it. And then you can even change the settings in there to make it persist. And because under the free one that's out here, I don't know how long this data lasts out there. I've, had, I've been able to go back to boards from a couple of months ago, but I've not been able to go to ones that I created like a year ago. So I have no idea how long that data is there, but you can set your own Redis cache up to persist. And the other thing that's great about it, I've seen other clients do, is you can go in and start customizing it. So if you said, man, I really wish it did this, you can go in and if you know JavaScript, you can go in and start making changes to it. And even then you can go around GitHub and start to find other people to publish different versions of this that they made changes to. I saw one the other day where somebody added a feature that you can add story points to these different cards to use for putting together your sprints. And so it's super easy, super low rent, and that is Scrumbler. All right, so somebody posted in there that they want to hear some Skinner, so I'm going to be uh, super agile and switch things up and play some Skinner right now. But thank you, Matt House. That was ultimate. And uh, let's see who's next. Jeff Fox? Do you want to show us how fun Fun Retro is? I feel pretty good about that. Absolutely. All right, thank you. So, hi, I'm Jeff. I'm going to show you Fun Retro, which is a very, it's a specific, uh, specific tool for retrospectives in an agile space. So the teams I've been coaching lately are agile teams and they do retrospectives, which a retrospective is a, is a ceremony where you kind of step back after you've done development and try to find one or two actions that you can take that will allow you to improve performance over time for your team. Fun Retro is great because it's fun, it's free, and uh, it's completely and utterly shareable and asynchronously. I can uh, add, I can add uh, columns to my template, and the, the columns are completely shareable with anyone who has the URL, I can control the number of, a number of votes there are, I can disable moving cards, I can export this board to, uh, to any kind of spreadsheet or anything else that you might wanna do. It provides just so much flexibility uh, when you're running a retro. The free version gives you three free boards that you can build and here you can see for this template we've been using uh, I can share a URL and then I can post that to Slack or to Teams or to Zoom or put it in an email and share it out to uh, anybody on the team. I can add a board by clicking here. You can build your own template, but we can use a whole set of existing templates that they've built around uh, doing retrospectives and making them interesting and useful, right? Good, bad, and ugly. I especially like the Elvis the Elvis template because it allows me to uh, do uh, do uh, do retros along the lines of you know like peanut butter, stop, drop, and roll, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, fun retro is fun, fun retro is easy, and fun retro is free. All of those things are on my list of things that I like. Fun, easy, retro is free. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much. All right. I did see uh, a comment in Slido that said they cannot, they're using Crisp right now and cannot hear my sounds in the background. That's pretty fascinating to me. So, I, uh, but then someone else also posted that they would like the playlist for this um, webinar. And so we'll make sure that's publicly available in case you are using Chris and you can't hear the music that I am shouting over. Um, and that Tool Junkie also posted, can you delete comments in here in case I type something inappropriate? Well, the answer to that is this is a free version of Slido. No, so don't do that. Be on your best behavior, Tool Junkie. And I just deleted his comment. Boom. Oh. Okay, well, there you have it. So next up, we have uh, John Cruson is coming back. He's gonna show us a thing or two about Loom. All yours, John. Thank you, Rebecca. 
Um, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about Loom, and for this uh, demo, you have to sort of play along uh, with this imaginary scenario here. <clears throat> um, Grandpa is quarantining in the basement, and um, <clears throat> so instead of going and uh, getting him and telling him face to face that uh, it's time to eat, I have to send him an email. I send out an email to the family, uh, mostly to Grandpa, because he's the only one that's quarantining. Um, and then I send this email and then I'm looking at him like, oh shoot, you know, if this were a face-to-face -face situation, this wouldn't be such a problem because he would understand what I'm saying is let's eat grandpa. But the email reads like we're all we're gonna have grandpa for dinner. So now I have a problem that I need to fix. So uh, that's where Loom comes in. I, uh, I install Loom and uh, I can eliminate that issue of, uh, you know, you can't read tone in an email. Um, by using this little guy that pops up in the tray again, and I'm just gonna send him a little note here. So I've got this thing set to record my screen and my camera. There I am, and I'll just start recording. I'm gonna get the little countdown. Three, two, one. Now I can say, Gramps, hey, I sent out this email just so you, if you read this wrong, it, I should have put a, uh, a comma here and an exclamation. Um, here so that you could have read it right, that we wanted to eat with you, not actually eat you. Hopefully that clears things up. I'll see you in a, in a few minutes. Don't forget your mask. All right, so I just recorded it and now it shows up in my Loom account here. Uh, I'm gonna call this the um, email overview. Okay, so I can, um, I can copy that link. I can head back over to my email and say, just in case, watch this video to catch the, the real understanding. And then I can shoot that off to everybody. Um, <clears throat> then what's pretty cool is I get to see everything in my personal library here, including that email overview and anything else that, uh, any other videos that I have created or any videos that have been created uh, that have been shared with me are gonna show up in my library. I can categorize them in folders. This whole thing, um, it's free for up to 25 videos and it's eight bucks a month if you want to do more than that and you want to share use this as you know an asynchronous communication rich communication tool it was built by um uh, not built by but it's uh, i think got some pretty significant backing from instagram at this point loom boom loom well that i i can't get over how your grandpa must feel right now uh, oh, he's relieved. He thought uh, that it wasn't COVID that was going to get him. He thought he was going to be cannibalized by his own family. And on that, cannibalism, cannibalism is pretty metal. That's so Demo funny. fast! <laughs> the most ultimate thing that has happened so far in this webinar. All right, so on that note, let us move along to our very final demo before we get into Q&A. And that would be Mike Veneman bringing the heat with Mentimeter. Mike is so impressed by everyone's demo so far, his head just continuously explodes. Yeah, I have to go fast because it's getting hot in here with all these explosions. So let me share my screen. And while I do this, go ahead and um, open up a browser window. You can use your phone, you can use whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to show you Mentimeter. Uh, one thing that I struggle with um, with remote work is <clears throat> keeping my audience engaged. So whether you're hosting a all day conference or a webinar like this, or just an hour long team meeting, trying to get uh, uh, participation is challenging. So one way you can do that is to ask for feedback and Mentimeter makes it really easy to do that. So <clears throat> you can go into Mentimeter.com. It's really easy for you to create a, a, a presentation to get some feedback, but it's even easier for your participants. So if you want to go to menti.com, type in the code. We see some people already in there and that's great. I'm going to go ahead and submit my vote on that one as well. Um, and I can see how many participants I got going. And then if you're in there, you probably will notice that you can't move on to the next question until I show it. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, I have uh, a multiple choice item here. Um, just to show you the content setup. I have my question, I have my answers. I got some other options down at the bottom. I chose a donut because I like donuts. And so we're gonna move on to the next slide. And this is a word cloud. Um, word clouds are kind of cool. They're kind of a fun way to get some feedback. So go ahead and 
throw in what apps we might have missed or what categories you would have preferred to see or, or maybe the next time we do one of these and we'll see how that goes. So we got some stuff coming in here and it's a, a word cloud. So the, you know, the, the most often um, voted word gets a little bit bigger than the rest. Um, and that's Mentimeter. I love it. Uh, oh, I will mention that this is the free version, but there are some plans um, and you can take a look at that at your leisure, but there's a lot you can do with free. So that's why I like it. Thank you. Wow. So that was a pretty metal way to end the demos. Thank you, Mike. And now what we're going to do is we're going to address some of this q and I know we only have a few minutes, so um, I promised a 45-minute webinar. However, if you are this excited about demo tools, um, then you can stick around as long as you want, and we'll be here for a little bit over the time. Um, so I'm going to hand it back to Matt House, and we're going to go ahead and address the very first upvoted question, which uh, has to do with that mural and Miro cage match that we promised. So I hope Betsy and Mark have been uh, preparing for this moment, maybe in the last 20 minutes, maybe their whole lives. Definitely my whole life. Uh, Mark, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Okay, I, I think if it was just Betsy and I getting in a fight, she would win that fight. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Miro, um, one of the things I like with it is it has this concept of like an endless whiteboard. Like I said, you get three free editable whiteboards with the free version. Each one of those is endless. It can go like on and on. And so some people will use them for presentations or interactive with a group and they can just have all kinds of little sections of the whiteboard, each with different templates and things like that. Cool. Um, Mural also has the endless concept. And I would say in all seriousness, like these two tools are pretty much the same thing. I think the main thing that won me over to Mural at that moment in time, in the early days of COVID, <clears throat> excuse me, was that anonymous link that I showed at the end. Because at that point in time, Miro still created you or required you to create an account. It was just a simple email and username, but still like that speed bump represented major friction if you're trying to do collaboration in a kind of a lightweight way. So Mural had that feature, which won me over to them. Now I understand that Miro has added that feature, so that's probably not so much of a differentiator anymore. I think, I think Miro, M-I-R-O, has more integration, so depending on what you want to do with it, you know, I think if you wanted to send stuff into Jira or something like that, you can probably do more with Miro. So the answer is Scrumbler, great. <laughs> right, so the good news is both are free and you can try them out with your team. Maybe give each a try in a meeting and see which one you like better. Um, but I feel like that was a draw. I know that's kind of lame because we were looking for some real heat there. Um, but you both <laughs> did a great job answering the questions. And if you are a former Mortal Kombat player like I was, we would call that a friendship moment that you guys just had. <laughs> anyway, so um, I, before I move us along, I know we're at time. Once again, if people want to stick around and hear um, the answers to some of the Q&A, please feel free to do so. We are gonna post a blog with links to all of these tools and a little bit of a summary. Um, this recording will be available. So if you're gonna hang up, thank you for joining. If you're gonna stick around, thank you for sticking around. Next question, Wade wants to know if we can, oh wait, no, that got upvoted. Ooh, in the last minute, Slido doing its thing. Democracy uh, at work. That's right. So Tool Junkie wants to know if we can integrate any of these tools with Slack or Teams and a bonus question, Slack versus Teams. Why is one better? I don't know if I can answer this. Does anybody want to take a try? I'll, I'll, I'll add one thing. Yes, Asana has a Slack integration. I'm going to put a link in the chat right here. If anybody wants to check out a, a lengthier uh, description of how, to, how Asana integrates with Slack, um, at a glance, it looks like there are ways to, uh, to have um, communication in both directions, from Slack to Asana and from Asana to Slack. So that's pretty cool. Um, and as far as uh, Slack versus Teams, Hmm. Personal preference, I kind of like Slack a little bit better, um, but I may be a little bit biased because I, I think I still harbor some, uh, some uh, ill feelings toward, um, uh, sorry, what's the name is escaping me, the Microsoft tool that, uh, is un, that underpins Teams. Can you help me? No, uh, 
Yeah, Link. Gonna, yeah, SharePoint. That was it. SharePoint. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> yeah, I still I still have some negative feelings about it. I would say Teams wins out on price. If you're a Microsoft 365 customer, you get Teams. And if you want to use Slack, if you're on Microsoft uh, 365, then you have to pay for it. Yeah, the biggest bummer about Slack is that you don't get that full history without paying for it. Everybody, everybody seems pretty bummed about that. There are a lot of competitors to Slack that try to solve that particular problem. Yeah, I, it's been a while since we've, we've used Slack, but um, the video... Uh, collaboration experience wasn't great when we were using it and it's not I mean it's actually pretty good in teams yeah does anyone else feel like this is getting tense I don't know <laughs> <laughs> we've got teams. I like teams now I like teams by the way <laughs> I'm, I'm on board <laughs> I like Slack. A little webinar where we actually go ahead <laughs> these two. So I'm going to move us along to the question about Chris. John, while you're still on mic, do you want to talk about yeah. three minutes? Um, yeah, so let's look at that question. Uh, you get 120 minutes every week? Yes. So it, we did a dress rehearsal of this thing yesterday and I had run out of my minutes and it luckily, it, or I guess two days ago, and it reset yesterday. So um, gladly, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to, to demonstrate it. But if you think about it, 120 free minutes, that's two one-hour meetings a week. Um, which means the other 38 minutes that you're on, likely on some sort of um, video call, you're not going to get it on the free version. So it goes quick. It used to be, be you could you could uh, turn it on and off. Uh, I think, uh, not, or you turn it on and it turns itself off. I think now it just stays on. So you have to kind of stay on top of it. And if you sign up with um, a work email, basically I think it's anything that's not a free domain, you'll get 14 days free of the pro. And then the more you recommend it out to people and they use that code, it'll keep adding more to your pro if you don't want to do the full year subscription. Brilliant. All right. So here's how we're going to do this because we've got a few minutes left before we wrap this bad boy up. We have two four liked upvoted questions um, that we will address, but you viewers have the power to upvote. Your vote matters. <laughs> you can upvote something while we address the next one, which is please compare Mural and Miro for running a four day training workshop for client kickoff. Um, Betsy, Mark, you are back on the platform with this one. Uh, and then I'll give you in the audience some moments while they're talking to upvote uh, the last question. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I do have to be honest with Miro, even though I like it, I think for people that haven't used it before, it can be a little bit of a, um, clunky start for them. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's great for a workshop and great for doing a lot of things, but I would say that if you, ha if you have people that haven't used it before, you might want to ask them to look at it first or have a little bit of the time where you show it to them first. So. Yeah, that's exactly where I am too. Like, I think it just depends on what you want to do with it. I have been running training and workshops with Mural and it, sufficiently covers everything we need to do in like a basic training class. But if you're doing something where you want data that's integrating with another tool, that is where maybe Miro has the edge. So it probably depends on your use case. Excellent. All right, so we have two tie-breaking questions that were upvoted. Um, we've been talking about the cost for any. Uh, we are gonna post a blog and address any of the questions that we haven't answered back to. So don't think that we're not going to address those. So let's go ahead and answer the question about Loom. John, if you don't mind, um, the person receiving the message, do they need a login? You do need a login. Yeah. Um, so you, you can record it when you're not signed in. I think it might force you to get a login when you install or when you, when you download it. Um, it's interesting. It used to only work in a browser as a browser extension, and they just added this new thing to install and I don't remember, because I already had a, an account, I don't remember if it forced me to, I don't know if it, it forced me to have an account or not to install the, uh, the desktop version. So if you don't have a login, you're not gonna be able to save your stuff and people aren't go going to be able to, people can send you uh, Loom videos, but you won't be able to save them and categorize them. Okay, perfect. So hopefully, um... You are still on that you I hope you found this valuable we had a lot of fun putting it together we have even more fun using these tools in our regular work life uh, makes things a lot easier um, so as far as what's happening next um, if you would like 
you can, oh, hold on, I need some music. Can you see my screen? Yeah, all right. If you would like, you uh, can go to our website and check out the blog. Uh, you can join our newsletter club and um, you can reach out to me at Rebecca at sketchdev.io if you have any follow-up questions, but be on the lookout for um, our blog posts. Thank you everybody who joined today in the audience and thank you to all the panelists who did a phenomenal job um, presenting some tools. You are all extraordinarily ultimate and that is it for us. We are signing off. Thank you, St. Louis. There will be no encore. <laughs> Hello, Cleveland. Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're actually in Pittsburgh. <laughs>